So the data uh, recall business uh, that we were in, and by the way, this is called Pith. It could be confusing. Um, I think even the kind of the paradigm that we are in right now, um, data oracle are still like very tied to uh, Web2. Um, the idea is that still like most of the data that goes onto the blockchain network are coming directly from Web2. So you're either incentivizing DevOps um, off-chain or you're trying to uh, like you know, scrape data from websites. Um, there's a couple of problems with that. Uh, one, obviously websites and internet they're not always like reliable, right? They could possibly go down. And another thing is like the distributed licensing kind of privileges down the road. Um, so that could also get become pretty complex as like DeFi continues to scale. I guess like a pretty good mental model to think about it, if you guys are off like the right generation, it would be like the Napster model for music. Uh, you know, at the time Napster was cool. You can get music pirated anywhere you want. Uh, but once that business really takes off, then the, the big players are going to come in and look at you and be like, hey, why are you pirating all the data and the information and music that we have? So that um, enters uh, Pith. Yeah, so we, we kind of started a like whole different network um, with first party data. Uh, the idea is that instead, instead of going to get the DevOps and bring those data aggregated off chain and then bring them on chain, uh, we want the publishers to come on and directly publish on Pith network. And the publishers in this case are institutions that, whether it's from the TradFi side or it's from, you know, the crypto um, institutions. So you have exchanges, you have uh, market makers, you have trading firms. Um, and then these trading firms, these, we call them publishers, they publish directly on um, Pith's own app chain. We don't really publicize it that much because nothing is ever going to really get built on there uh, with the except of publishers coming in publishing. The nice thing to have about that is one, um, transparency is totally, you know, there because you can see directly which publishers are publishing what kind of price feeds, uh, what kind of frequency every block. Um, and two, um, the whole data aggregation process is totally by smart contract. Um, so you can also see like what's the input that's going in and what's the output that's coming out. Yeah. So, um, in the bottom, you can see um, that's how like the traditional kind of oracles work. Uh, whereas on the top, um, you have exchanges, uh, training firms directly contribute data on the Pith network. I don't even I know a lot of times like oracles will say we're sourcing data from um, you know X Y Z. I don't even really like the verb source because uh, in this case it's not entirely accurate, right? It's like the publishers come forth and directly publishing the data on the platform. Um, so yeah, so Pith has only been live for. Um, now it's about two years, um, but has gained quite a lot of traction. It started off on just Solana, quickly took over that world. Uh, then we started going cross-chain about, I want to say like September last year. Um, from there, we were able to quickly take over uh, almost like a lot of the EVM compatibles, also the movie ecosystem, um, and I guess a little bit of alpha, but Pith is going to definitely be live on uh, Sui um, on day one. But yeah. so. We were able to accomplish quite a lot. Um, you know, now we have 80 plus uh, data publishers. We have facilitated 35, over $35 billion of uh, total traded volume. Uh, the price fees, you know, like six months ago was just like 30 because it was only on Solana, but now we have grown to 230 price fees. And those price fees are very different from um, the other kind of oracles, meaning we are publishing at almost like sub second. So uh, we're able to update our price uh, twice a second. and because of a nice architecture that we have, when you look at the number 13 connected blockchains, they're all so sourcing directly from our app chain. So whenever we add w one more price speed, we don't have to go to the process where we, you know, we go to every single L1 or L2 trying to figure out the process of adding that one price. Speed. The moment we add that one on the PithNet, which is our app, app chain, all the um, ecosystem could enjoy the same kind of quality of price feeds everywhere, all at once. So yeah, um, just some numbers, some metrics, uh, interest of time, um, gonna go to the next one. Yeah. And at the end of the day, this is almost like a marketplace business, right? So when it comes to marketplace, you always have the supply and the demand. Uh, the supply side usually, and this is just not, not just in Web3, in Web2 is the same. The supply side is usually the harder side, right? You got to crack that and build that moat that you have. Um, and in this flywheel effect that we have, the publisher growth is really, really um, crucial to uh, Pith as a whole, because the more publishers we can onboard, uh, the more price feeds we can support. And um, expanding that universe and so on. Um, and just one thing to note, uh, behind every single symbol that Pith supports, um, that publishes twice a second, we want to have, and we have currently have, at, at a minimum of seven publishers. 
Um, so you would have you would have like the the, the traditional trading world like Jane Street, you know, Sid, uh, Jump, HRT. But you also have like TradFi exchanges for like equities such as Siebel, um, you know, IEX. But you also have a lot of crypto exchanges, so like Binance, Bybit, KuCoin, OKX. The idea is just like this: like if it's a trading firm that's publishing one price feed, then very likely that trading firm is already quoting it or pricing it uh, very actively. If it's an exchange, then you know it would just be whatever that's on their book. In the blockchain world, when people think about half a second, that's like wow, like the speed is really quick and the update frequency is really high. But you know, coming from like a high frequency trading space, half a second is literally like eternity. So this is a really, really sustainable model for them to keep publishing and contributing data. Yeah, so we started off um, a year ago, uh, two years ago. Um, now we're sitting at 81 data publishers. Um, so all, almost all the trading firms that you can see um, and almost you know, all the largest um, exchanges are already on this platform. And this is something super cool to see. I don't think people appreciate it well enough. Um, I used to work as a trader, um, actually one of the other publishers as well. And now I work at Jump. Um, trading firms don't like each other, guys. Like they never, they almost never collaborated on anything, right? So the the, the whole game they're in is incredibly zero sum. Uh, but now a lot of trading firms and exchanges have recognized the, the need of this public good to, if, for DeFi to really scale, you need first party and high frequency data. Um, so it's super refreshing to see them come forth together and you know, trying to build this platform. Yeah, so kind of like I said, uh, we were sitting just at 60, uh, data feeds and because we are able to onboard uh, publishers so quickly now we're sitting at 231 data feeds yep so um you know if this graph whatever this slide would like look very different uh, if this was six months ago uh, but ever since we started going cross-chain uh, you can recognize uh, names from almost you know every single l1 l2 um, so this is not exactly an announcement or news but uh, about a few months ago synthetics actually uh, moved away from Chainlink, and now their entire V2 that's live is powered by Pith. Um, so yeah, this is just some nice graphic to show you some breakdown of um, Pith as a true uh, cross-chain oracle. Yeah, once again, we're just trying to drill on the same point. But yeah, what is the, the future of the Pith uh, oracle? I think for us, we always want to, you know, add more data feeds. Uh, that's like super important to us. Um, so uh, we're incredibly fast. Um, so if SUI goes live, we're going to be able to add a lot of native feeds super quickly. Uh, take ARB as an example with the, with the Arbitrum airdrop. Uh, Pith was actually able to get the ARB feed up in less than six hours. Um, and when that feed was up, it was, um, I think it was nine trading firms slash exchanges that are already supporting that fee. Um, I think we move incredibly fast, uh, but data feeds and the publishers are our core um, you know, uh, moat. Um, another thing is we do a lot uh, to, you know, you know, work with the projects uh, and trying to give the best kind of support that we have. We kind of think of ourselves as the the bridge between DeFi and uh, TradFi. So the projects that have integrated with Pith, whenever they, you know, want an intro to to the publishers, we work with these guys on a daily basis. We have always been super happy to to make that connection. And a huge motivation for these publishers to to contribute to Pith as a platform is, Almost all the trading firms, TradFi, whatever, they want to they do crypto, but not all of them have the same kind of comfort level. They don't know where to start. Um, but this is a great soft landing spot for them to kind of dip their toes um, in crypto and kind of like a safe environment for them to come in and contribute some data. Uh, with that being like, you know, in mind, a huge goal for them is to also to get to know the space a little bit more, get to know the projects. Yeah, I guess that's it. Thanks, guys.